This is a SnapEd New York video presentation. Hi, I'm Geraldine, and I'm a SNAP educator working with the SNAP education program at City Harvest. Today, I will prepare three delicious recipes using winter squash. Winter squash is packed with nutrients. You could use it in sweet and savory recipes. It has a really long shelf life and you could store it for about two to three months. My plate illustrates the five food groups that are the building blocks for a healthy diet. We see the five sections that make up my plate. Fruit, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. When looking at your own plate, we should aim to make half of our plates fruits and vegetables. Adding squash to your plate can help you get one step closer to meeting your daily intake of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetable rich diets may reduce the risk of heart disease, including heart attack and stroke, and may protect against certain types of cancer. Although squash is treated as a vegetable, it is actually a fruit, so it falls into the fruit category. Winter squash is a great option because it's high in fiber. Dietary fiber coming from fruits and vegetables helps to keep you regular and reduce constipation. Now let's get started with our first recipe, Parmesan roasted acorn squash. For this recipe, you will need a two pound acorn squash, two tablespoons of olive oil, eight sprigs of fresh thyme, a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, and salt and pepper to taste. Be sure to wash your hands thoroughly. I wash these ingredients in cold running water. Select squash that has a dull color skin that is actually firm and it's heavy for its size. Usually when squash is not heavy, it means that it's drying out on the inside. You wanna make sure that you store it in a cool, dark place and it could be stored for up to two to three months, somewhere that is not moist or near a window. If you want to microwave your squash to make easier to cut, you can start piercing it with a fork. You can make this recipe using any winter squash variety. So we're going to cut the top and bottom and squash is usually a little hard to cut. So don't think that because it's hard to cut that you got a bad squash. So I, I usually like to take the top and bottom and you could save this for soup later on, or you could use it to make broth. I like to freeze my, my scraps just to make broth at a later time. So we're gonna cut this in half, and this gonna make it safer when you're trying to cut produce that rocks and roll. We're going to scoop out the seeds. and put it face down to be cut. And then I like this recipe, slice into half moon slices. It just looks prettier. I like to hold my knife with the three fingers wrapped around the handle and my thumb and my index on the blade because it gives me an easier grip. I wanna make sure when I'm cutting that I'm holding my knife safely and that my knife is sharpened because you never want to cut anything with a dull knife. It's actually safer to cut with a sharp knife. Cut or cooked squash could be stored in the refrigerator for about a week. If you want to store it, you could put it in a tight container or wrap it with clear wrap. On a baking sheet, you're going to toss your squash with your olive oil. So we're going to add our two tablespoons of olive oil. and our fresh thyme. You could also use dried thyme. This has been dried. It used to be fresh at some point and this has been dried. So you could just run your fingers through it from front to back so you could release it. And using your fingers is actually a great idea because although it's dry, anything that you touch with your fingers, the warmth of your fingers actually lets you get the oils out of any herb. And you wanna do that when you're working with basil, when you're working 
with mint or any other herb. So we're going to add a bit of pepper. And sprinkle some salt. Any salt that you want to use is fine. And we're going to toss this to get all those flavors into our food. And I like to arrange this. I love how this half moons look in our pan. And sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese. And this is gonna give it a nice crust. We're going to roast the squash in a preheated 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes until it's golden brown and tender. For this recipe, this is about a half a cup portion, and this is about a cup portion. Our next recipe is going to be spaghetti squash. When you cook this, you could pull the meat of the squash in shreds that look exactly like spaghetti. That's where the name comes from. And I usually like to remove the top and bottom. Okay, that flew out. And you could use a regular chef knife or a serrated knife for this recipe, whatever makes it easier for you. You could also put it in the microwave, pierce it, and leave it for about two to three minutes to soften. Squash contains potassium, which is good for a healthy heart. Squash also contains no cholesterol or any kind of fat. So as we did with the acorn squash, we're just going to scrape the seeds out. I like to brush this with olive oil so it doesn't get too brown around the edges. And we're going to cook it facing down. I usually like to put a clove of garlic to give it a little bit more flavor. We could roast this in a preheated oven at 400 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on the size of your squash. Once your squash comes out of the oven, you could take a fork and just kind of pull the skin out of it. And as you can see, it really looks like spaghetti. So that's why it's called spaghetti squash. And it is a great alternative to having actual spaghetti. And you can now garnish this with your favorite pasta sauce. Any kind of sauce that you would like goes really well with it even if it's a meat sauce. For this recipe, we're going to need one tablespoon of olive oil, a small onion diced, three cloves of garlic diced, one green apple diced, and four to six cups of butternut squash dice. I decided to use four for this recipe. So four cups is totally fine. Curry optional. I will do a half a tablespoon, three cups of vegetable broth, and one to two cups of low fat coconut milk. Salt and pepper to taste. We're going to mince our garlic. And once again, because this is going to be blended, you don't have to have the perfect cuts. So I usually just remove the back of the garlic and basically I just run my knife through it. And you could just do this rocking motion to finish dicing your garlic. It's always safe to do a bridge over your onion when cutting and creating a flat surface. So we're now going to peel. We wanna make sure that our onion is not slippery 
so sometimes a second layer needs to be removed for that. So since we're going to blend this soup, we don't have to worry about our cuts being perfect. We're just going to dice our onion. The apple for this soup should be green. That reduces the sweetness of the soup. So we will usually keep the skin when using apples for other recipes. But in this case, since we're going to blend it, the skin could result in the soup becoming a little grainy. So that's why we're peeling this apple. But if you're snacking on an apple, having the apple with the skin will increase your fiber intake, which is going to help you keep full longer and reduce constipation. Remember, it's always okay to flip things over if that makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Once again, this is going to be blended. We could just rough chop this. We're going to saute our onion in the one tablespoon of olive oil for about three minutes. We want to make sure our onions are translucent, which means they look a little bit clear before we add our garlic. We are now going to add our garlic. I usually like to do a well in the middle before adding the garlic. And we're going to cook for another minute. We're now going to add our butternut squash. Our apple. Our curry powder, if you're using it. And vegetable broth. We are going to cook this covered for about 15 minutes. Once the vegetables are really soft, we're going to transfer them to a blender. We are now going to stir our coconut milk. So one to two cups, depending on the amount of squash that you use. Adding the coconut milk will lower the temperature of your soup so that way we don't have something very hot in our blender. We're now going to cover this and we're going to blend. When using store-bought vegetable broth, a little bit of sodium is added into it. So it's good to buy one that is low in sodium. We're going to try our soup and find out if we need to add salt and pepper to taste. So we could add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. When you don't like those little black dots on your soup, you could always buy white pepper. So that will be great for those soups that are a little lighter in color. So we could serve our soup and garnish it with our herbs of preference. Herbs are great because they add flavor without adding calories, and we don't have to use too much salt when creating our dishes. Thank you so much for joining me today as we learned to prepare three different recipes using winter squash. Remember, small changes in what you eat can make a big difference. Thank you and see you next time. Now I don't know which one I'm gonna eat first. Thank you for joining us today. We know the healthy choice isn't always the easiest choice, but small changes can make a big difference. Start today by getting involved with Snap Ed New York. This program is free for those who qualify or receive SNAP benefits. We want to help you save time, save money, and eat healthy. Learn how SNAP Ed can make a difference in your life. For more information and to find your local program, visit snapedny.org. This material was funded by USDA's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. SNAP, this institution is an equal opportunity provider.